Hi guys, this is Shalini and I am back to you with another video and today the topic is about ECG. So we are going to deal about the basics of ECG today. So if you like the content and the video, kindly like, share and subscribe and let me know your comments as well in the comment box. So to begin with the conduction system of the heart, as you see here, this is SA node, the pacemaker of the heart from where the impulses are generated. These impulses are led down to the internodal pathways and from the internodal pathways, it is received by the AV node. From the AV node to the bundle of his, which bifurcates into the left and right Purkinje fibers. This is how the heart contracts and relaxes. Now, let us see a little more detail on it. Okay, this is another picture where you see the SA node, the internodal pathways and the impulses so generated will contract both the atria and also is led down to the AV node and then which is passed on to the bundle of his and the Purkinje fibers which will let even the ventricles to contract. So now let us look into these two pictures. Now if you look at the first picture, this is the baseline. This is also called as the isoelectric line. There are positive deflections, there are negative deflections. So, this is the upward deflection is called as positive deflection, the downward deflection is called as the negative deflection. So, P wave is a positive deflection, Q wave is a negative deflection, R wave is a sharp positive deflection, S wave is again a negative deflection and then you have the T wave. In the second picture if you see, now we will see what is the meaning of each of these waves. So, P wave, P wave represents, represents atrial depolarization. So, depolarization means contraction. QRS complex, this complex, it denotes ventricular depolarization, which again means contraction. Then we have the T wave, which represents a ventricular repolarization, which denotes relaxation. Now, let us look at this picture. Now, how can we correlate these two pictures? P wave denotes ventricular depolarization that is the contraction of the sorry atrial depolarization that is the contraction of the atria then you have ventricular depolarization that is a qrs complex so you have the ventricles contracting here and then you have ventricular repolarization that is relaxation of the ventricles so where does atrial repolarization or contraction happen it is believed to happen between the p wave and the qrs complex so first the atria will contract and relax and by then the ventricles will contract and relax it's a quick process so it is not clearly depicted in the ecg wave so now let us look at some specific terms what is a wave? A wave is either a positive or a negative deflection from the baseline. So that is called a wave. So now P is a wave. This is a wave. That is Q is a wave. There is R wave, S wave, T wave, U wave in this picture. The next uh, term I want to introduce to you is the interval. Interval is the time between two different points. So, this is one point, this is another point, the time between the, these two different points which can also include an electrical event. Electrical event is this positive or this negative deflection. So, this is PR interval, this is ST interval from the J point till after the T is the ST interval, this is the TP interval. So, these are intervals. The next term is segment. Segment is this baseline without any deflection. So, this line that is PR is a segment. This is without any deflection, without any electrical activity. Now, let us see the next segment. This is ST segment. This also does not have any electrical activity included into it. Next thing, point. In the whole ECG strip, there is only one point called as a J point. Any elevation of this J point uh, can tell you if there is any myocardial infarction, any MI, any ST segment associated elevated MI. So, this is the J point. Next thing is a complex. Complex is a group of waves. Here, this is the complex that is QRS. This is called a complex because it is a group of waves which includes Q wave, R wave as well as the S wave. So, now let us look at the specifics of a ECG strip. Specifically, this particular box. The vertical line is measured in millivolts and the horizontal line is measured in seconds. So, the vertical line each small box is 0.1 millivolt. So, uh, 0.1 multiplied by 5. So, one big box is 
five small boxes horizontally and five small boxes vertically. So, 0 0.1 into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gives you 0 0.5 millivolt. Similarly, horizontally if you calculate, it is calculated in seconds. So, each small box is 0 0.04 seconds. So, 5 boxes will be 0 0.04 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5 which gives you 0.2 seconds. Now, if you look at this ECG step, you have P wave, you have Q wave, R wave, S wave, you have the ST segment, the T wave and the U wave. So, there is a particular time interval at which each of these waves is supposed to be completed. For example, the P wave should be completed within 3 boxes, 2 to 3 boxes. So, this is 1 box, 2 box and this is the third box. So, the time is going to be 0 0.08 to 0 0.12 second. We will look at it in the next slide. Yes. So, the P wave has to be completed within 3 boxes that is 0 0.08 to 0 0.12 or 1 1 seconds. So, I, I, as I told you each box is going to be 0 0.04 seconds. This is how it is calculated. The PR interval is the normal is given as 0.12 second to 0 0.20 seconds. QRS interval should be less than 10 seconds, the QT interval should be less than 0 0.38 seconds, the ST interval should be less than 0 0.12 seconds and the T wave should be less than 0 0.20 seconds. So, this the vertical axis is measured in voltage as I told you millivolts and the horizontal axis is measured in time that is in seconds. So, when you want to take an ECG, placement of the ECG leads is very important. So, there are two leads that I have mentioned here. One is the precordial leads and second one is the limb leads. So, the precordial leads are called so because they are placed onto the chest or onto the precordium and hence they are called so. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 which is otherwise V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. So, V1 is placed onto the right sternal border on the fourth intercostal space. V2 is placed onto the left sternal border, fourth intercostal space. Then you have the third one which is between the second and the fourth one. The fourth one is placed onto the mid clavicular line which is the fifth intercostal space. Then we have 5, the fifth lead which is placed on the anterior axillary line in the fifth intercostal space and you have the sixth lead which is placed onto the mid axillary line in the fifth intercostal space. So, these are called as the precordial leads. Then we have limb lead which is one is placed onto the right side, second onto the left and third onto the foot. The end represents neuter in both the pictures and it is just to complete the circuit. Now, let us correlate the precordial leads and the limb leads that we have seen in the previous picture to this current ECG strip. Now, if you see this is lead 1, lead 2, lead 3, AVR, AVL, AVF. So, these are the 6 limb leads. Now, if you look at this picture and as I have told you before, there is a electrode or a lead that is placed onto the right arm one placed onto the left arm and one placed onto the foot. So, that is the depiction of AVR, AVL and AVF. So, A represents augmented vector right, augmented vector left and augmented vector foot. This is called augmented because it is mostly calculated along with the lead 1, 2 and 3 and most it is very less times it is calculated around. So, most often it is calculated along with 1, 2 and 3 and that is why it is called as augmented. And lead 1, lead 2, lead 3 basically you do not place it while you take a ECG but then it is these lines that you see between the leads that is connected. So, it is it helps you to observe the heart at different degrees like, like at 90 degree angle at a 60 degree angle that is the meaning of this lead 2 and this lead 3. Then we come on to precordial leads that is V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6 which I have told you these are the chest leads. Always when you look at when you want to calculate the rhythm or when you want to calculate the heart rate you go by lead 2. So, this is the lead 2, this is the uh, bigger purview of the lead 2. We take lead 2 because always at lead 2 you can get a better clarity of the P wave and the complexes. So, that is the reason why we always go by lead 2. There are some basic steps that you need to know while you want to interpret a ECG strip. So, the step 1 here is determining the rhythm. So, these this is an RR interval. See the sharp R wave that you see 
and the distance between each that you see are the RR intervals. So, between each R wave is the RR interval as I told you. To determine the rhythm, you want to know whether the rhythm is regular or you want to know whether the rhythm is irregular. So, if the distance between each of these RR intervals is same, then you say it is a uh, regular rhythm. But when the distance is irregular, you say it is a irregular rhythm. Now, in this particular picture, if you see, you can see one big box, second, third, fourth and fifth big boxes, five big boxes. Here you see three big boxes. So, the RR interval is not equal. Hence, it is not regular. Next is calculation of rate. Here you can either calculate the rate considering the large boxes or considering the small boxes. So, how do you consider, how do you calculate the rate? For a normal rhythm strip, now this is a normal rhythm strip. For a normal rhythm strip, you will do 300 divided by number of large boxes. Now, 300 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 300 divided by 4 gives you 75 beats per minute. So, the heart rate is 75 beats per minute. Now, here you cannot see the small boxes. Within each big box, you have five small boxes. So, you can do 1500 divided by number of small boxes between the RR interval. So, you will have five boxes here, five boxes here, five boxes here, five boxes here. So, you can do 1500 divided by number of small boxes between the RR interval and that gives you the heart rate. So, these are the two method, two ways in which you can calculate heart rate for a normal rhythm. Now, let us see how to calculate the heart rate when, when the rhythm is irregular. So, in this case, the rhythm is irregular. Let us assume, as I have told you, each big box is 0.2 second and each small box is 0 0.04 seconds and each big box will contain 5 small boxes. So, it is 0 0.04 multiplied by 5 which gives you 0.2 seconds. So, that is understood. So, 1 second, this is for 0.2 second. So, 1 second will have 5 big boxes and 6 second will have 30 big boxes. Now, when you want to consider calculating of heart rate for an irregular rhythm strip, then you have to calculate the heart rate in this method. That is number of RR interval in a 6 second strip multiplied by 10. Now, let us see an example. Now, in this example, let us assume that this is a, a rhythm strip where the heart rate is irregular. Let us just assume it like that. And now I have to con uh, calculate the number of RR interval. So, in a 6 second strip, for a 6 second strip, how many boxes I should take? 30 boxes. So, I should start counting the boxes. I should take 30 boxes from here. So, let us assume that these are 30 boxes. Now, in this sec 6 second strip or in this 30 boxes, how many RR intervals are present? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, there are 7 RR intervals multiplied by 10 which gives me 70 beats per minute. Step 3. In step 3, you should look at the P wave, whether it is present or absent, if there is any other morphology with the P wave. PR interval, calculation of PR interval is step 4. So, I have told you what is a normal time interval for PR interval, that is 0.08 to 0.12 seconds. So, you see whether it is prolonged. It is usually prolonged in cases of hard blocks. Step 5 is calculation of QRS complexes. Again, you look whether the time interval is okay or not. If it is narrow, then you have to look whether it is a SPT wave. If it is broad, then you will have to think of uh, bundle branch blocks. Similarly, step 6, you look at ST interval. Again, ST segment elevation we have heard. We have heard about ST segment elevation MI. So, ST segment is characteristic of that. T wave again, if it is an inverted T wave, you have to think of ischemia. If it is elevated T wave or a positively deflected T wave, which is more than uh, normal, then you have to think of hyperkalemia. Again, you have to think of ectopic beats, which is step 8. So, the conduction disorders will be discussed in the uh, next ECG series to come. But I hope you understand the crux of how do you uh, simply interpret a ECG within 8 steps. So, today we had only looked at the basics of ECG. So, I hope that you liked the video and kindly let me know your topics of interest and definitely we will cover the other conduction disorders and how do you interpret ECG in case of various morphological variations. All that we are going to see in the coming videos. So, let me know your doubts, comments and clarifications as well in the comment box. Thank you. Great day ahead.